Let me talk to you guys about something that I call strategic quitting. Strategic quitting. Um, you know, this saying I've always found irritating, to be honest, uh, that says, uh, you know, winners never quit and quitters never win, um, is not actually accurate because it leads you to believe that people that win never quit and people that quit never win. And that is just not true in life. But for the purposes of this idea, this concept, I want to say that winners quit all the time and that's why they continue to be winners. The difference between when a winner quits and a quitter quits is one is strategic and one is reactionary. That if you quit in reaction and anger and frustration, uh, a job, a role, a position, an opportunity, um, or anything in life that you got involved in, all of which has frustrations, I think people that are not winners and don't have a winning mentality tend to quit in reaction and protest and anger without thinking through um, was that necessary to do and in the way that I did it. Strategic quitting is quitting on your terms. It is best spoke tailor-made, unique designer quitting is the kind of quitting I want to encourage you to add to your skill set in life. And then your quitting becomes strategic and thought through and intentional. And what winners do, I think, in life, in any winners that have any longevity in winning, if you study them in any walk of life and listen to them or read their biographies and so on, they'll tell you that they have quit so many different versions of themselves. They have quit so many things that they tried but didn't work. So it's not that they didn't quit. They just they didn't quit the big dream, the goal, the idea. What they did quit on, they quitted the parts of it. They quitted approaches to it. They quitted uh, circumstances and they quitted methodologies and styles and relationships and mindsets and belief systems. They quitted those things in order to continue winning. And uh, even if you're in a job right now that you hate, don't like the job, I had to learn this in my work life of various jobs before I came into full-time what I do now, but it is better to quit parts of the job that you hate if you can, then quit the job altogether. Some of you think that you have to quit the job because the job's driving you crazy, but if you could separate out what parts of the job drive you crazy, um, and you could uh, quit those parts or delegate those parts to people who love those parts, but you hate them, then you get longevity and you continue to win without abandoning, if you like, the career or the role, or the job that you are in. And a lot of us need to learn to quit strategically inside uh, something that we are doing, rather than quit it all and reinvent the wheel in trying to do that whole thing again somewhere else. Because the things that you and I don't like about what we do um, will reappear in different forms in every next thing that we do. You'll never have a job, or a role, or a vocation, or a calling, um, that doesn't contain parts that you hate and sometimes you've got to do the bits that you hate till somebody else comes along that loves them that can release you then from doing those bits that you hate and you can specialize more in just doing what you love to do. I know that that takes time. I know that that can be a luxury compared to where you are now, especially if you are in a small organization or you're self-employed and have to do lots of things yourself because you can't afford to staff people to do the bits you hate. But I think it's a principle that, that is relevant whatever season and stage and what work situation you are in. That if you can learn to quit, quit strategically rather than quit reactionary and quit knee-jerk, in which case you throw the baby out with the bath water, quitting strategically lets you keep the baby whilst, whilst at the same time getting rid of the bath water um, that is just not the right temperature, the right consistency, the right kind of water, the right volume of water, and so on. It's the water is the problem. It's not the baby in the water that is the precious idea, the calling, the job that you once loved, the relational thing that you had that was great and worked, 
don't throw the baby out just because you can't stand the bath water. Is there a way that you can stay in uh, the neighborhood of where the baby is, stay loving and nurturing the baby, as it were, of your gift, your calling, your vocation, the passion that you have, um, and change water? So strategic quitting is going to allow you to do that. I wonder if you would um, think more because often when it comes to quitting, we don't think. We just react and feel our way into a conclusion. I wonder if you could become a strategic quitter uh, in this next season of your life. I think it will make you uh, more effective. I think your life will become more purpose-driven rather than reactionary, mood, feelings-driven. And I think you'll learn the art. And it is an art, not a science. Strategic quitting is an art. Best spoke designer quitting whether it's a big thing or many small things inside a big thing as i mentioned strategic quitting in life is the way to go what's not working quit it what's going to get worse if you keep doing it what's not productive it's these things that we prune and we cut back um, and we delegate and we get out of and away from and we still say in our, still say in our, stay in our sweet spot our calling our area of genius don't let the things that you hate about it make you quit it altogether because we need you too much because you're too brilliant at what you do. So quit strategically. And I think if you'll apply that to your approach to this season of your life, then you will hold on to what you love and let go of the bits that you don't love much more skillfully. Strategic quitting.